I'm going to Art Madrid right now, taking line one, line two. Okay, we're at Gran Villa. It's just a 10 minutes walk from here. This white building in the end of the street here and Art Madrid is just behind it in the beautiful glass ceiling. Grand Palais look like building and is one of the best location to be honest because it's in the city center in a historic area next to all the landmarks and beautiful cultural heritage and wait it's red light where everyone's crossing all right so um, i'm arriving and uh, hopefully i still have a couple of hours before heading back to arco hello bear art madrid let's see what they have tira they give me this wait is that me or i think this is the same booth same gallery as last year Hey, 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 this is more from the future. I just got back home and I'm recording this voiceover to share with you guys my impressions and to let you know that I had a very fascinating encounter at Art Madrid. I came across an artist slash curator who is running the smallest art gallery in Europe. It's a super cool project and I would like to show you guys um, the interview I had with him. Check out the timestamps if you would like to go directly to that part. First, let's talk about the 17th edition Art Madrid. I'm happy that things are finally getting back to normal. Last year, Art Madrid took place in May and the ambient was completely different. Um, there was a lot more works about the swimming pools, the sea and holidays. Well, there's nothing wrong about um, being eye candies. We all need pleasant images sometimes, but it did get a little monothematic when almost every gallery had something blue in their booth. It was the lockdown and the summer. It's totally understandable. This year, the selection is much more diverse. You can see a wide range of subjects, formats, media, and styles. I prefer this edition, Art Madrid, to the previous one for sure. By the way, I think I've never mentioned it formally that we are not affiliated with any art fairs or companies who are not paid to say good things about them or to promote a certain artist or gallery. We're completely independent and neutral. We are supported by our patrons. So we have a Patreon page just in case if you would like to check it out, I will not say no. So when I say that I enjoyed this art fair, I mean it. And I'm showing you what I see there so you can always make up your own mind. Just when I was about to head off to Arco, I saw this elegant gentleman sitting in one of those blue chairs. I was like, wait a second, those chairs uh, were installations or what? Then he invited me to sit down next to him and have a chat. Three yes, please. Oh, sit down. Lovely. Uh, I am Andrei Bartsenev and I am Russian artist, but last eight years I have uh, my artistic studio in Spain and my friend he bought uh, a gallery space in Valencia and we decided to open a gallery Dr. Robot. Ah this is big secret who is Dr. Robot but, but we will represent his art. We have smallest gallery in the Europe. Our gallery is 20 square meters in center of Valencia, two huge windows and little corner. What we represent in our gallery, it's a new way of Russian art. My idea to create system of little galleries, because Valencia is a very uh, specific uh, historical center, and we got uh, this space because it's building um, 1920s, beautiful old building, and we're happy to have our gallery space there. In December last year, we bought maybe 15 me me meters uh, up to the street. We bought second place for new gallery with different name. Uh, if uh, Dr. Robert will be a um, story about uh, paintings, but in new space, we want to concentrate on photographers and uh, printing art. Do you know, it's a very hard job to have gallery. For me, it's easy because I create big private foundation and uh, 
one of the missions of our foundation, we collect a lot of beautiful art around the world. I know like 300 Russian artists. And for me, it's very easy to choose who is um, precisely fit to Dr. Robert Gallery strategy. For me, it's easy. I don't know if anyone have so many information. Uh, you need to have um, a possibility uh, how to manage your ego and uh, uh, talent art uh, from your colleagues. Uh, my artistic ego, sleep. And this you should know. If you open gallery, your artistic ego should go sleep. I tell to boss of a gallery, Alexander, I tell to him, okay, if our gallery in Valencia not sell nothing, it's not bad. It's our little beautiful office in Valencia. And uh, we can go to art fairs and we can find our collectors on art fairs, but we have beautiful base in Valencia. If you have possibility to buy, buy place for your gallery. If you rent, you should know this is, will be hard life because you need to pay all this rent, it's circle, 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 and it's make you tired of business. But if you bought, you just, hmm, okay. Business go very well, oh fine, pocket is full, artists have food and paintings and uh, canvas, yeah, everything is fine. If it's business, it's okay, you have beautiful gallery space, that's it. <laughs> Oh yes, please, look. Vova Perkin, 25 years old. New art star of Russia. <laughs> this is hard things to tell. Uh, you need to be very pushy. Very pushy. And it's not you need to push everyone around you. You need to push yourself. Because of course you need to paint 24 hours a day. And you need to listen good recommendations. You need to uh, find your uh, unique language, visual language. If you will find your unique visual language, it's like you win. How I open him? It uh, was in the beginning of the coronavirus. Uh, my gallery in Moscow decided to make online uh, exhibition. We just self-portraits. Okay, we do huge online exhibition on YouTube, self-portraits. And we got three, no, maybe 400 of images from different artists. We select and we make short films with music. We put on YouTube and uh, collectors will look always and start to buy uh, paintings from this project. And we, we tell in the beginning, we want to support to artists because it's coronavirus and everyone is sit, sitting in studio and depressed because it's no exhibitions, no parties, no sale. And we do this. And it starts to work. And he was one of, in this project, Costa. And one museum bought his uh, painting. Next museum bought his painting. But it gives to him hope. That's it. And we can see beautiful painting on the entrance. We have this beautiful painting. It was exhibited in Saatchi Off Show in London and came to here from London. I do all my life this. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Robert Gallery is the best surprise I had at Art Madrid, a tiny gallery that is not limited by its physical space, thanks to the internet and the art fairs. I hope their story will inspire you if you are thinking about starting your own art gallery. All right, this is all for today. Tomorrow there is more. See you in the next video.